Tetsu! Visual novels! Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome to Fetish Every Second Counts. You will be playing as Hexia. Thank you for letting me know, game. I do appreciate that. As I was savoring my midnight snack, a series of knocks disturbed my precious moment. My precious moments figurines. I didn't answer, pretending I wasn't in. But the knocking just wouldn't stop. Irritated, I snapped. What? The bright light from the hallways entered the room as the door slowly creaked open. Slowly, like my asshole during a fart, a figure appeared against the light. Its tall and slim stature looked awfully familiar to me. Are you Jack the Pumpkin King? Mistress? Hearing the voice, I quickly recognized who it was. It was Cain, our family's butler, and my little brother's favorite. Uh, even though I was irritated for being disturbed, seeing his face, his pretty face, puts off my annoyance. Mistress? Hi, Cain! You made a total mess this time, Mistress! Really now? I thought this was pretty much the same every time! Do you love my sexy hexen voice? The carpet is drenched, mistress. Who is it? <laughs> I glanced from my bed to check on the newly purchased carpet Kane had bought from a shop of imported goods. I had period blooded everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, it looks really drenched. Did I do that? And I suppose you do know how hard it is to clean out of a carpet the size. Yes, mistress. I giggled. I always enjoyed Kane's facial expressions. I like it when you smile, although he always complains with the class. Uh, take note, he still does what he what has to be done. A very patient and obedient, but, lur. Yes, I do! And it's a very valuable one, too, mistress. Such a waste, such a waste. Stop complaining! In any way, will you clean them still? Yes! I smiled at him while waiting for his reply. I love playing with Kane, baby talking with him, watching his face do expressions with those beautiful pair of ash mauve eyes. Baby Goo Goo Gaga, do you like that butler? Oh! I could stare at him forever. He is so beautiful, just like a painting. Do I have a choice, mistress? Thank you! Please do hurry with your dessert, mistress. You know blood gets harder to remove when dried. I will, I will! I'll return in a few moments then, minutes even. Kane said and left my room immediately. Ah, we must hurry now, mustn't we, love? I whispered lovingly into the lifeless head in front of me with staring eyes as beautiful as the green meadows. I giggled with so much excitement. <laughs> I've been longing for your eyes for quite some time now. I carefully snapped the blade hanging from my neck as a pendant and started gouging his disbeloved eyes. Oh dear. Uh, saying I love you to me is how do I say? Uh, promising you'll sacrifice to give me everything, isn't it, darling? No! Oh. One eye out, one more to go. <laughs> you just don't know how happy I am right now! Best day ever! The beautiful pair of green eyes are now in my possession. Thank you. Morning came finally. Some people give up sex on the first date. Apparently that guy gave up his eyes. I always rise up early and fix myself, even though there's nothing really special going on. Just getting up is special. Just my usual routine of waking up, taking a shower, dressing up, eating, and then afterwards, do whatever I have in mind. A boring life, really. However, every once in a while, there's this one thing that I just love doing. Masturbation! That is, pestering my little brother. Oh, that has nothing to do with masturbation, I hope. Knock, knock. Yeah. As usual, he's not answering. He's always like this to me. So uncute. I slowly opened the door, which made creaky sounds, and peeked in. Oh, there he is! Without warning, I entered Viv's bright and well, freakishly r white room with thick boots and greets him lovingly. Thick books, not boots. Hey, sweetie! I caught him with a surprised expression, but he quickly changed it into a frown. I giggled, thinking how adorable this little boy is. Huh, and if you're just going to pester me, then you better leave. I need to finish these three books before sunset. Go play somewhere else. Ah, 
<laughs> Is that how you talk with your dearest sister? I childishly replied to him, hoping he would let this slip. Uh, if we only sh if only we share the same interests, then I would have let you stay, but sadly we do not, dearest sister. Besides, I know how much you despise reading thick books, and I have no picture books for you. So leave my room now. I pouted my lips, batted my lashes, and then suddenly, there's, there's no helping it, I can guess expression appeared. That's what I've been waiting for. Fine. Just don't make a total mess of my room or I'll kick you out, okay? I won't! My brother Vera, who seemed to always shut me out of his room, is actually this forgiving, adorable, and sweet boy. He may not look it because of this gloomy and almost always irritated look that he always wears. He's still a good kid and always lets a pass always lets a pass to my demands. However, despite his young age and doll like figures, he has a strange fascination. He is fascinated with poisons. Deadly poisons, as opposed to any other kind. This poison made me a little nosh nauseous, made me a little farty, but that's okay. His shelves are filled with medical books and journals, to which he uses the knowledge he gains in diff creating different kinds of poisons. Creepy? Nah, the proper word would be terrified. But nonetheless, I love this kid to death. Uh, what are you gawking at? Stop it, you're creeping me out. Nothing, you're just so adorable. He looks, he just looks the cutest when embarrassed. His cheeks always turn red pretty fast. He then sighed and continued reading his thick book. Suddenly, we were interrupted by knocks. Oh, somebody's knocking. I answered fine mentored, our favorite butler, Kane. Uh, hello, mistress. Young master. Hi, Kane. Looking sharp as ever. Uh, what made you come here? Uh, the bookstore clerk called a while ago, and now I'll be heading out to pick up some books you've reserved last month, young master. All right, Vera orders books on a regular basis. I think they are all they are about all sorts of herbs and spices. Yeah, stuff that I, uh, don't interest me, no matter how hard I try. Eh, uh, is, is that so? Yes, young master. Is there something you would want to be bought? Nothing in particular, thank you. Uh, buy some uh, macaroons at Anila's. Anila's Bakery. The pastries are so exquisite. I just want to buy them all. Understood, young master. I silently giggled, watching them converse. It's always fun. Two beautiful creatures in front of me. Delightful! Suddenly, Kane turns to me. Hello about you, mistress. Is there something you want to be bought? Oh, well, maybe something for Neela's, too. Or some of them dresses are... <laughs> well, why don't you just go with Kane instead? Oh, go with Kane to town? Hmm, seems like a good idea, but I plan to stay at home. But going out is nice, too. The air is kind of polluted and would ruin my skin. What should I do? Let's go to town. Let's force Veer to come with us. Uh, why don't the both of us go with Cade? I refuse. I have books to finish. Jeez, take a break, would you? All you do is read from sunrise to sunset. Let's go hang out. I agree with the mistress, young master. You could oh, you almost don't go out of the mansion as well, young master. It's 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 unhealthy. Kane is right. Unwind for the meantime. You need fresh air. The air outside is polluted. Um. Right, I forgot about that. Come on, Veer. It's a come with us, or you'll never get your book situation. Mistress, ask us when did it become like that? Just now. You. Mistress, you'll upset the young master this way. We gotta force him, or he'll grow up to be a hermit! Your logic sometimes amazes me, mistress. What? I need my books! Can't go to town now, or. We're not headed out if you won't come with us! Uh, are you serious? Damn serious, sweetheart! This is ridiculous. It's even ridiculous. It's bedonkadonkulous. I think I won! Girls are always about winning. He'll be in a foul mood all day, I worry. You're banned from entering my room for a month, Hexia! I think that means he's coming with us. Delightful. Look at what you did, mistress. But I really 
want him to go with us. He's just stuck at home all the time. I decide how people should live their lives. I know it's best. Yes, but forcing him like that, we should probably expect his mood swings. Yeah, 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 he does. We arrived shortly enough to Kane park the car, and Vera quickly got off the vehicle and walked away. I think it meant walked away. Vera! He's mad. I've really done it this time, huh? <sighs> Let us hurry and follow the young master. Welcome! Oh, uh, young master Vera, is it? It's rare to see you visit the store. Uh, it's because somebody blackmailed me. Pardon me? Well, where are my books, good sir? Uh, of course, please wait for a while. Um, for a reason. Hey, there! Easy there! Stop! Don't get your panties in a bunch! Ah! Panties! <laughs> Why is my sister a moron? He's ignoring me! I need attention! <laughs> Vera went to a, some stack of books, reading each title carefully. He <laughs> Woman number one. While waiting, we heard two women chuckling while browsing some books. I don't have any more women voices. Ah, balls. <clears throat> is that him? Oh, yes, it is. Adorable, isn't he? Are they perhaps talking about Via? I mostly see him on weekends, though, so it's a surprise that he's here right now. He's cute. <laughs> hey, hey, they're talking a bit loud. I don't notice he's into medical books. They're into children. He looks like a child. Mm, I thought you difficult for a little kid to read. Mm. A little rude, aren't we? Oh. Mm. Ah, Vera snapped. Mm, let's go. Maybe we can get some french fried potatoes. And then the women quickly left the store. Why are always people being so why are people being so annoying today? Come on, why is everybody gonna ruin my stuff? I'm just trying to have a nice day and they gotta come here and judge me. What's up? Um <laughs> Vera is really mad. Um I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, uh Vera. Two references and three journals, uh are they now? Yes. Uh can you get those, my good man? Yeah, of course, young master. And I want those three white books, please. Noted. Mr. Rainey hurried to the stacks and carried the thick books, Veer pointed out. Afterwards, Mr. Rainey hands the bill to Kane. And just that, Veer went outside. Uh, the young master seems to be in a foul mood. No? Yes, he is. Well, mood swings are common to kids. He'll be all right after a few hours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rainey. You're always welcome. Take care, and you too, young miss. I will, thanks. I noticed me. Hexia? Yes? That surprised me. I am banning you from going out of the mansion. What? What? Hey, now, I'm sorry for forcing you to come, okay? Just because I want you to have a life. But banning me from... I'm banning you from... I'm banning you, okay? You can't leave the mansion. End of talk. Uh, what was that all about? Just because I forced him to do things I want to do and not the things he wants to do, he's acting like a little child. Everybody should do what I want. Everybody! Mistress, young master is a child. And in this case, you're the one who's acting childish. I'm not! Fine! Whatever! It's okay, but still! Yeah, I was the one at fault, but I didn't expect Vera to pull some terrible conditions from his sleeves. And in this situation, Kane absolutely obeys Vera no matter what. Today is really exhausting, and Vera's, Vera's mood swings were stressful. Yeah, I shouldn't be complaining, but banning me from stepping in his room and going out was a bit too much. He could have just banned me from... from... Whatever! Knock knock, get some cock. No one is in! I'm the bed! I'm a talking bed! Go away! I'm sleeping! I'm dead! Really, I'm in no mood to entertain anyone right now. That's normal when somebody calls. Would you like to hang out? No, I'm dead! Go away! I'm not moody! 
What band is she? Oh, she's the Moody Blues. That's what I mean. Stop playing dumb. Oh wait, you you are dumb, but I'm sorry. Fair! What are what are you? Listen, we have to talk. Oh. Yeah. Talk. Have you ignored me while back and banning me? Are, are you sure you're in the right place to get mad? Um. I'm so irritated right now. I hugged a pillow, refusing to look at fear. That will show him when I hug this pillow. Can we just talk? We done tomorrow. No. Oh wow, what is commanding response? Um, fine. I apologize for my behavior earlier, but I'm trying to teach you a lesson here. Yeah, right. A kid teaching me a lesson. Nobody teaches me shit. Listen, I don't have time to argue about nonsense here. Don't act like a brat. I'm not a brat! You're the brat! You're Brady McBratterson! You're like Brady Jones in the Temple of Brat! Readers of the Lost Brat! <laughs> I grabbed a pillow and threw it at beer. Yeah, that's, that's very mature. Bully! You? Glaring at each other, I realized how similar we were. Veer picked up the pillow and threw it back at me. What? Veer runs to me, to my surprise, and our bodies collide. Ah, that hurts. Veer! We're wrestling. We're actually wrestling and pillow fighting. This is delightful. You think you can win over me? Nobody beats Hexia! Uh, uh, I embrace Veer tight and start tickling his nape. Hey, hey, stop! I don't even know what a nape is! Leave my neck alone! You like that, huh? Stop, stop! I don't, I don't like that! Oh. Ah. Fear laughed louder as I tickled him from his nape down to his waist. Hexia, stop, stop! <laughs> no more, no more! Hearing his plea, I immediately stopped, kissing him on his forehead and cheeks several times. Our way of making up with each other. Oh, God. Please don't let it get any further than this. I won! Eh. I kissed him one last time and loosened my embrace. We rest for a while as we catch our breaths. So, uh, what do you want to talk about? I was patting Veer's back gently as we talk. Uh, about your bands. I stopped. Um, I'm sorry for forcing you to come. Alright, this dialogue is really creepy with this image. Maybe my mind's just in the gutter, but yeah. I won't do it again. You better don't. So adorable. Anyway, I have a reason for banning you from going out. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it because I forced you out? No, that's not it. Huh? When we were in town, there were men oogling at you. Fear? So that's why you're banning me? Just because of some men admiring me? Oogling and admiring are two different actions. Oh, <laughs> jeez, Fear. I hugged this kid tight. Thank you for taking care of me. This kid always does drastic measures, even because of the smallest things. I guess that's his way of protecting me. Kind of protective, are we? Uh, you're a goner now without me. You better be more alert. You're not a kid anymore. I know, I know. Good. Uh, can I step in your room now? No. Really? Fear yawns and rubs his eyes. He's gotten quite, <laughs> he's gotten quiet late already. It's gotten quite late already. Apparently I don't know the difference between quiet and quite. Sleepy! Um, wanna sleep here for tonight? No. Okay. Every once in a while we do this kind of thing as a sort of bonding moment. Since he wasn't able to experience sleeping besides mom or dad, I'm taking the place of his, of a parent towards Veer. All right, that's kind of sweet. Even though I'm not really a mother figure yet, this was the least I could do for my baby brother. I kissed him one last time. Good night, dearest! Alright, so it wasn't creepy, thank god. My mind was just in the gutter. I got scared, okay? Sometimes with games like this, you don't know. So, at least I just look like the weird one instead of the game. It was raining the next day as usual, and I was hanging out in Vera's room. Yes, the ban got lifted, thanks to my endless plea. However, because of the cold weather, Veer continued to sleep even after the sun has risen. Peacefully watching over him, I was letting the time pass by. Well, checking out his books. 
I tried reading one of his medical books, but as always, I just looked at the photos. Who is it? It's uh, me, mistress. Uh, I got Kane's voice wrong. I've been struggling with that throughout this. Hi, Kane! Uh, hello, mistress. Has the young master woken up yet? No, he's co it's cold. You know he's weak during cold weather. Is something wrong? Uh, unexpected visitors have arrived. Visitors? Now that's real. Who might they be? Um, the butler was silent as if telling me the visitors were bad news. Kane! They're requesting you and the young master, mistress. But, but Veer is sleeping. You know Veer gets upset when somebody disturbs his sleep. Yes, I'm very... Uh, <laughs> what? Yes, I am very aware of that, but... Now there's a maid? <sighs> mistress, the guests are like waiting for you and young master Veer. I'm coming! Mistress... I get it, I get it, whatever. Give me a minute to wake up, Fear. Brushing my brother's hair aside, I softly called him out. Fear? Don't hit me. I gently caressed his cheek then. Fear, wake up! Go away! He sounded so sleepy as he pulled his blanket up. I'm sorry, honey, but there are guests who want to see us. Tell him to go fuck off. Fear slowly opened his eyes, sat up, and rubbed them. How cute. I fixed his hair and kissed him good morning. After this, yeah, you can get all the sleep you want, okay? Uh, what? Good boy! I held, his baby's, I held this baby's hands as we got ready to go down to meet with these visitors. Walking in the hallways, Veer kept on yawning and rubbing his eyes. Poor kid, his sleep got disturbed because some guests wanted to see us. Just look at you. Who could they be? Hey, Kane, who are these visitors? Uh... Uh, you, you'll know soon enough. What? Okay, this isn't necessarily woman number two. What took you so long to get here? We apologize for having kept you waiting, madame. Of course, it had to be a woman's voice to get wrong. Ah! Uh. Huh? Dad! Mom! Is that how you greet your parents who've just returned home? Um. Well, is that how you greet your children who you haven't seen for seven months? Your mom's got a nice rack. It was uh, what I wanted to reply, but that would only make the situation worse. Welcome home, Mom and Dad. Aren't you going to s oh? Aren't you going to say anything there? Um. Uh, w w w welcome home. Uh, wh where have your manners gone? I've expected the two of you to be more mature, well-mannered. We're sorry, Mom. Well, sorry you two are always gone. Oh, well, sorry you two are always gone, so no one was here to hone us in on your ideal children. How I wish I could say that. Catherine? Or Katharina? Stop spoiling the- Spoiling- Stop spoiling them, Theo. They become like this because you baby them too much. Why, because he sees them once a year? Anyway, we'll be here for about a month. During our stay, I will teach you both. Especially you, Veer. I don't want to hear any excuses. You both understand? Yes, Mom! Yes? Forgive your mother, Hexia. Veer? She's been in a fall mood ever since last night. No worries, Dad. Besides, we're already used to it. Mom's kind of a bitch cunt. We call her bitch cunt. I made up that name. Uh, anyway, we brought gifts. Uh, if there are some that you don't like, throw them away. Wow. Just like that, Dad left. That's right, it's always like that. They thought giving us presents was enough to please us, to make us happy, to satisfy us. But in, really, in reality, we don't need presents. We need parents! See, I, I knew that was coming. So far, actually, I'd like to write in this. I've always dreamed of eating dinner with a complete family, not only for my sake, but also for Veer. However, right now at dinner, although technically we are complete, it doesn't seem that way. 
It's cold and silent. My resentment building up inside me. <sighs> How was everything here in the mansion when we were away, Kane? The same as usual, madam. Is that so? Have you been buying excessive books still, dear? Uh, nobody likes a smart kid. Uh, silent, aren't we? Mom! Hexier, have you been turning down all the invites from your suitor? You've been turning down all the invites from your suitors, aren't you? Uh, I told you, Mom, I... You're old enough to marry, Hexia? Why do you think God gave you a vag? It was to make babies for me. I'm gonna be a grandmommy. Marrying should be the best option for you instead of indulging yourself in a senseless hobby. Katharina, spare the children for night. Come on. Theodore? Uh, I, I'm done. I'm done. Fear? Fear! Fear quickly left, running down the hallway. R really? That kid never learns. <laughs> you would never understand fear, Mom! Dinner ended with Mom and Dad retreating to their room. I was left seated in the ha dining hall as the maids cleaned up the table. Mistress? I'm alright, Kane. Please go check on fear. As you wish. Tonight was rather messed up. I returned to my room to cool my head down. My head hurts! Kane and I met in the hallways a while ago and told Veer was being silent, ignoring whatever Kane asked. Oh, poor baby! A parents returned after seven long months of business trips and other agendas, and yet all they did was reprimand us. They didn't even say if they missed us or something like that or anything that was more positive. Well, at least Dad's always there to calm Mom down or else something might happen. Uh, still feels as if they're away. Emotionally distance. I wasn't feeling particularly sleepy nor tired. Maybe I'll check fear instead. I wonder if he's still awake. I carefully opened the door to avoid making noises and slowly peeked in. However, it wasn't Veer whom I first saw. It was Dad. He was pulling up Veer's, who was sleeping, blanket. It was a rare sight to witness. In fact, I think this was the first time I've seen Dad do such a thing ever. Hexia. Oh! Um, hi, Dad! I didn't know you were here! Uh, have you come to check on your brother? Yes, apparently! How about you? I mean, you rarely do this kind of thing, like, checking on your own kids! I tried to make it sound like I was half-joking and half-faking a laugh, but my dad's expression didn't change. Uh, I'm a father still, Hexia. Uh... I was honestly surprised to hear that coming from Dad, especially in a rather melancholic tone. Now I kind of regretted half-joking about him checking up on Veer. Anyway, l let us talk somewhere else. We might disturb your brother. Ah! Talk somewhere else? First he checked on Veer, and now he wants to talk to me? This never happened before. I quickly followed my dad, who was walking in a rather quick pace. Or because he has long legs? Staring at my father's broad back, I just noticed that he's really tall. I remember the time when I was a kid for about five or six years old. Um, I used to be really scared of my dad and had always refused to be carried by him. Aside from his stern, gloomy face, his height was pretty ghoulish and intimidating. Right now, even as I grew tall, after I grew taller and became an adult, he's still so high. To my surprise, we went to the second kitchen. Um... Dad opened up a bottle of wine and had two glasses prepared. Uh, I assume you drink wine now, Hexia? Ah, uh, yeah, Dad! I'm totally rocking it like that! I sat down as Dad poured wine in the glasses. Watching him now, he kind of looked less scary than before. Ah, uh, thanks, Dad! Dad didn't sit down, but instead leaned on the wall in front of me. He stared at his glass of white wine, and I thought he looked lonely. Hexia? Yes! I stuttered a bit. I was feeling a bit nervous and even thought it was just my dad, but perhaps his long absence made me feel this way. Not to mention we rarely even talk in the past with just the two of us. Uh, do you always check on Vera at night like this? I do, but not like every night. Only the times I can't sleep. 
He always stays up late from reading those books. Though I guess he slept in early tonight. Yeah. He was crying. Fear was? Fear was crying in front of Dad? Really? I find that hard to believe since not even once have I seen Veer cry, well, except when he was still really, really young. Was he already crying when you checked on him? But more importantly, why? No, he uh, cried after we chatted for a bit. I think you can guess why. Um. Because of Mom was what on my mind. Was what on my mind. Was on my mind. But I was feeling hesitant to br bring it up. So I just stayed silent instead. Have I become a good father to you both? Uh, Dad? Uh... I was having mixed emotions to Dad's questions. I didn't know what to respond to, actually. We're staying in a mansion. We have what we need. Room, bed, food, clothes. We even have mates to serve us. We're living abundantly, and as a parent, he had given all of them. Uh, that should make him a good father, right? No, Dad, you're not a good dad. You're never there for us. I sighed and held my chest, my boobs. I'm sorry, Dad! Tears fell as I was apologizing with trembling voice. I'm sorry, Dad, but despite all the things you've given us... Hexia? Even though you're here, Mom's here, feels like you're still away. You're never around when I need you! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The truth always hurts, they say. But saying it yourself to one of the most important persons in your life makes it even more painful. That night, my chest continued to throb. My eyes continued to tear. My heart continued to hurt. The next morning, the rain poured. It felt awfully dull and silent. It was like the sky was crying in my stead. Tears of the clouds are crying on me. Mistress, it's time for breakfast. I can't remember his voice to save my life. Coming! Thank you for waiting. Of course. Did you check fear? Yes, mistress. How was he? Is he okay? Dad said he cried last night. Way to tell everyone, Hexia. When he woke up, his eyes were a bit swollen, but he told me not to worry anymore. I see. May I ask what happened last night? Dad visited Fear last night, stayed to have a chat, and then Fear cried. I'm guessing it was because of Mom. Is that so? Fear is a kid, and as a child, he is pretty sensitive when it comes to Mom. On the other hand, Mom always snaps to Fear. On the other hand, Mom, she always snaps to Fear. I know she doesn't like him, but... I wish she could be just a little kinder. Fear doesn't need endless reprimandations, but understanding. As do we all. Ka uh, you're late, Hexia. Katharina. Theo, I know what I'm doing, okay? Uh, Shouldn't let yourself get used to get getting up late, young lady. I'm sorry, Mom. <sighs> Sit down now and let us eat. You can eat a big bowl of my dick. The dining hall, as always, was silent and heavy. It was probably because of Mom's continuing bad mood since the other night. Veer looked okay, though. I just hope he's okay inside, too. After breakfast, Mom and Dad went out to visit some of their business partners. More like business partners. You know what I mean. Again, they left. What's the point of staying here if they'll just continue to go out because of their business? Just like my usual routine, I hanged out in my brother's room while he was picking a book to read. Staring at him, his eyes were still a tad swollen. He must have cried himself to sleep or woke up in the middle of the night and cried. I don't know, but if I ask him, he'll just deny it and make up excuses. Such pride this boy possess. Despite his young age, he learned to be independent and self-reliant. Uh, what are you staring at? <laughs> Nothing! Weirdo. He looked and sounded fine. He just needed rest after all. The day passed without us doing nothing. I wasn't in the mood to do anything. I was feeling rather lazy and tired. This might be because of our dad's conversation last night. A lot of things had been going on in my mind. Lots of what-ifs and even dreams. From time to time, I'm imagining some scenes wherein we are a happy, completely normal family. Where Dad and Mom are happy parents, always wearing a smile plane and studying with Veer. But as I was daydreaming, I realized what was in my mind was impossible to become a reality. It's the harsh truth when you have to accept them for who they are. Huh? Ah! 
I didn't know that I was asleep. The cold weather must have gotten into me. I checked the time and it was already... Past nine? I hurried to fix myself and got off to bed. Did you miss supper? Is mom going to be mad? On my way to the dining hall, I met Kane. Hey, mistress? Kane! Really, why don't you wake me up? Look at the time, mom will definitely be mad! Um, about that, mistress, I intentionally didn't wake you up as uh, the master ordered. Dad? Yes, and I was on my way to your room. Oh, okay. That was unusual. We never missed dinner. Did something happen in the trip, I wonder? But anyway, the master asked for you. He's currently at the entrance hall. Oh, okay. How about dinner and beer? Did he ask for beer, too? No, he did not, mistress. And young master's still asleep. Dinner will be served after you and the master talk. Um, okay. It's late dinner. This is really odd. I quickly went to the uh, went at the entrance hall and saw Dad. Dad! Uh, Hexia. Hey, Dad, what's up? Uh, I mean, did something happen? Where's Mom? Oh, that was weird. Me asking where Mom is? Maybe I was just too used to seeing them both together. Hexia, uh, Katharina's gone. What? Dad, what do you mean by Mom is gone? Did something happen or what? Hexia, listen to me. Dad? My heart was throbbing nervously. Something was off. Where's Mom? Did something bad happen to Mom? Listen, it doesn't matter where Katharina is. But... Hexia, right now, don't you feel relieved? Dad? Relieved? Relieved that Mom is gone? I'm not gonna lie, I found it disturbing that Dad asked me such a question with a straight face. Mom is his wife, she is my mother, how could I... Katharina's always been rough to you and cold, and especially to Veer. What's going on in my father's mind? What's exactly happening? And her strict cold upbringing, it's giving you guys a hard time. As a father, it hurts to see my children engulfed in despair because of your mother. I was a fool for doing nothing, letting Katharina uh, do whatever she thought and believing it was good for your own good. That sounded really apologetic and regretful, but... But now that Katharina's gone? But why is he relieved that his wife is no longer here? I want us to have a fresh start. A fresh start? Why? Yes, let's reset everything and have a fresh start. Just the three of us. Is he... Why is he so calm? Why does it feel like Dad expected Mom to be gone? Dad? I'll make up with the years I haven't been at your side and be a better father. I promise you'll live a better, happier life. Dad? A happier life? Suddenly the scene I had imagined flashed into my mind. I kind of want that life. I want a life without too much restrictions. A life where we always smile. A life where we're always together. Even when we poop. A life with a complete family. Hexia? Huh? Why did I think of that? I just considered us a complete family without mom in the image? Uh, will you give your father... Did I really feel relieved that she's gone? A second chance? Dad, I... But... I... I clenched my fist. I want my dream to become a reality. Of course, Dad, of course. Fuck Mom. My tears fell and the throbbing of my heart fell away. The chest felt t lighter. My chest felt lighter. Thank you, Hexia. Dad? Dad smiled for the first time after many years. Dad? I ran to him and fell into his embrace. I couldn't remember the last time that we hugged. This feeling was uplifting. Dad is here. Welcome home, Dad! Details were told to Veer that very same night, albeit he was uh, surprised, but joy overtook his heart. Everything, just as Theodore said, was reset, and they had a new start. Theodore uh, almost never left his children aside as he promised and was able to run the business while at home. Their lives have slowly become lighter. Good night, Dad! Good night, Hexia. I stared at the ceiling, feeling my heart beat, slowly breathing, thinking things through. This is not a dream, is it? Although generally I am happy, I was feeling something else. Jeez, or am I just overthinking things again? Whatever it was, what's important was everything from now on will be better. I decided to visit Dad in his room and thank him again for finally being home. As always, the mansion was dark, cold, and eerie, but his... 
but this time I wasn't afraid to walk alone. I was feeling good and happy. Suddenly a slightly open door distracted me while on the way to Dad's room. I remember this particular room always being like like a storage space or something. I didn't really bother knowing. Curiosity was eating me, so I went ahead and took a peek. That doesn't look so good. Then I closed the door. Hexia? My heart kicked a little at the voice which suddenly called my name. I turned around and it was my father. Dad! Why are you still awake? Well, um... I was on my way to your room to check you out. Are you still having trouble sleeping? Sometimes. But I'm going to be fine. No worries. Then go ahead and rest. I'll escort you. Thanks, Dad. Has that room got meaning? I would assume so. What I saw inside the room was rather bizarre. Unexpected. What made me realize the truth behind Mom's disappearance. Congratulations. You reached a good ending. Wait, is the good ending the dad killed the mom so they didn't have to put up with it? If so, whoever wrote this, this was an interesting story. Um, I will put a link in the description, as always, if you want to check out the other endings yourself. I'm assuming that's what the ending is. Dad's like, you know what, I'm sick of you, wife. You're a shitty mom. Time to murder you and not clean it up, because I'm lazy. <laughs> oh, arts and story by Sora Malsu. I'm sorry, I said it. I probably pronounced that wrong. Either way, I, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that LP. And now I feel really bad that I was afraid that things were going to go in a creepier direction. <laughs> I'm like, the mom's probably dead. Not that creepy. <laughs> it's a happy family. That's the important thing. Thanks for watching, everybody.